Hey folks, today we're going to make a flow on Superfluid. So in the last video, I created this uh, little resolver mod module that helps us get all the contracts. And so now that we have all the addresses for the contracts, uh, let's start with a uh, fake token FDI. And we are going to mint ourselves some of that. So we're going to pass the address there and uh, get some fake die. We're gonna take, use this handy converter and we our input amount is gonna be 100. Yep, yep, yep. And we're gonna pass that as the data to this and the address for the uh, fake die token. We're gonna sign this transaction to mint some. So now basically we're just giving ourselves some die on Gurley. Okay, so uh, while that's doing its thing, let's unhook some of this stuff. Uh, we actually all right, so now you might be saying like, all right, we now we got super fluid, but how do we make our, our uh, sorry, how, now that we got die, how do we make our die super fluid enable? Well, we need to upgrade it. And in order to, to do that, we need to know the address for the ERC20 wrapper that super fluid uses. And we do that, we get that using the host contract. So we're gonna go to the host contract and call get ERC20 wrapper. And so the address that we're going to pass here for the underlying token is the same as the FDAG contract that we just minted our die from. And the symbol is actually uh, the name of uh, the symbol of the token. So in our case, it's FDI. Uh, but then you add the suffix X. So FDI and then lowercase X. And that's going to be the symbol for our wrapper. And... We call that, and we get this uh, this wrapper address here, zero uh, x d eight oh five, and so this is deterministic, um, and it's uh, using create two. So we, the superfluid host contracts aren't aware of like all these tokens, but uh, when you do want to make a superfluid enabled uh, version of your token, you can use uh, create erc twenty wrapper and get erc twenty wrapper to find the address for that. So I've already put that down here into our super token contract. So basically I just instantiated a super token uh, at that address using the ABI for uh, all super tokens. It's all right now, it's all the same surface um, and it's called DIEX. Okay, so now that we have our DIEX wrapper, we need to do the uh, approve and upgrade uh, flow. So this is the same as like a proven deposit or some or proven, uh, a proven call, right? It's the same uh, paradigm. Um, and the spender in the approval step is going to be the wrapper. And the amount is going to, let's just upgrade all of ours. So um, the output for that is going to go to the data field. And the input is again our FDI contract um, because we're making this approval for the die that we already have. Okay, so before we do that, let's check our our balance um, of of FDI. So there we see we have a hundred FDI, um, and this isn't going to do anything, right? Because we still have to call upgrade after we do the approval. Um, but just for clarity. All right, so we're allowing the wrapper contract, super token wrapper, to spend our die. And while that's um, getting set up, let's start putting together our upgrade. So the upgrade, let me make sure that's the most up to date. Yeah, okay, so upgrade uh, from super, uh, our die X contract only takes a single argument because of course, it's deterministically created from the address of the token that we're going to upgrade. Uh, so it knows FDI, right? Because it's created from FDI. Um, and so it also knows who is calling uh, upgrade using message.sender. 
Uh, maybe in the future, there'll be a way to upgrade um, by passing the address. Okay, so we will pass that here. Oh, we missed it. So to our MetaMask and then the data, I'm sorry, the to address is our die x contract. And let's give that a call and sign away. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we should do something like check our balance. So the account that I want to check for is going to be, of course, our MetaMask account. And we will see that now we have some amount of die, right? So let's go, let's convert that from where? All righty, okay, so now we have 100 superfluid die or die X. Okay, so we are ready to and i'll i'll just leave that down there i know it's kind of in the way why don't we do this why don't we scoot these over okay so so far we got the erc20 wrapper we minted some die we approved and upgraded our die so now we're ready to create a flow all right the token uh the first argument for creative flow is the token and that is going to be uh, the address for die x Uh, and the create flow is coming from the constant flow agreement contract. So just to reiterate, we have superfluid host, we have constant flow agreement here, and then we have F die and die X. So there's only four contracts right now. And two of them are basically the same thing. One is a wrapped version. Um, the receiver for the flow, well, let's create that now. So we'll just create a random uh, wallet. Crypto key pair. Uh, uh, we don't need the public key, we need the address. And we are going to wire that into the receiver. And then um, the flow rate is amount per second. And uh, I already calculated this in the tutorial, so I'm just gonna uh, come over here and, and cheat. So we pass, and I, uh, this is explained here, um, but essentially it is, this number times uh, 3,600 uh, seconds in a hour times 24 hours in a day times 30 days divided by 10 to the power of 18 uh, is equal to $100 a month, or sorry, 100 die per month. And so, oops. So let me copy that value. And um, this actually is in uh, this is in way already, right? Because we already did the conversion. There we go. You didn't see it, but we, d we did the conversion. I don't want input, I want text. Come on, all right. So this is gonna be our flow rate. And then um, context is not really important now um, it'll be it's it's not important for this tutorial at least so we are going to pass zero uh, X okay so now we have the data for that uh, that's gonna go over to our transaction object and the, the two values. Okay, so who are we who are we calling here, right? So we need to tell the constant flow agreement, but actually we're we're not calling the constant flow agreement. Uh, and this is where it gets a little tricky. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna call um, we're calling the host contract uh, dot call agreement. And then what we're doing is we're, 
passing the address for the constant flow agreement address. And then we are, as a second argument, we're passing the encoded data as if we were going to call the constant flow agreement. So we call uh, contract.methods.createFlow. We pass all the arguments that you just saw us do, right? And then we call dot encode ABI. So uh, eth.builds right here, the output from this uh, is our encoded ABI. So we're actually not going to send that to our, our MetaMask, right? This needs to, now that we've encoded it, uh, this needs to go and get passed as an argument to a function on the host contract. Okay, so if you're still with me here, um, this ABI that I use, we need to update. And I am going to go to the, um, the preview repo where, that has all of the ABIs. We're going to copy that. And we're going to paste it in here. And we'll see that we get a lot more methods now on our superfluid host contract. Uh, before, remember, we only cared about uh, get ERC20 wrapper. But now we are going to use the function call agreement. Okay. And remember, the first thing we said was uh, we passed the address for the agreement that we want. So we're going to pass it the address for our constant flow agreement. And the data is the output from our encoded create flow, right? So we're going to wire that up to here. OK, so call agreement, we're passing the address for the agreement that we want, and then the arguments for the method that we want to call on that agreement, which is create flow. And we pass that to data, and we hope that it works. Oh, no. Don't want to see that. Oh, I think I know why. It's because we're still trying to call, um, we're still trying to send this message to the DIX contract. We need to send it to the superfluid host contract. Cross your fingers. Alrighty. So now what we can do is we can check. Um, let's create another balance of. And we'll copy this. And move it up. And the input from this is going to be uh, that new address that we created over here. And we'll wire that up. And now that the agreement has started, you can see that this number has decreased. And now this number is starting to increase. And um, the magical thing here is that it's increasing in between blocks. It's just that the contract cannot calculate um, or the network cannot calculate what the amount is in between blocks because it uses the timestamp of the last block to compute the amount. So uh, let's say there's a thousand blocks in a month and uh, I set up a hundred die a month. So uh, what is that, uh, you know, 0.1 die every block, right? Uh, but what if there's 2,000 blocks the next month? So does that mean the amount's going to change? Well, no, because it uses the timestamp of the block to, to calculate this. So I don't know. I just think that's really neat that uh, even though block times might change, uh, the amount that's transferred is actually dependent on 
on time. So every single second, the amount is going up, even though you know blocks may only occur every 15 seconds, but it's really happening every second. It's like in between, I don't know, it's just like this meta uh, uh, cool concept. All right, so, so we are flowing 100 a month through that new account that we just created. Um, what, what now? What should we do now? Well, let's, uh, let's stop the flow. And we do that by calling uh, delete flow. And uh, we are going to use, of course, the address for our die x. The sender is, um, is our MetaMask account. Our receiver is our address. Oh, oh. Oh, come on here. Our receiver is our new address. And um, context is again that, that 0x that we're not really concerned about right now. And now the output from this, right, is um, an encoded ABI argument, right? So we see, you guys know how this works, right? There's the function signature followed by the arguments uh, encoded in, um, in ABI format. And we are going to pass the output from that to the second argument for call agreement. And the data for that is going to go into our actual transaction. So you notice the function signature is different, right? Because we're calling delete flow here to create, to generate this encoded um, uh, transaction. And then here uh, we have a new function signature goes into there and uh, let's call this and we will see that our numbers down here uh, stop incrementing and decrementing so uh, notice right now 98.53 but our amount that the receiver has received is only 0.08 Okay, oh, and then this just jumped. So what happened there? So in order to make the system functional and to ensure uh, for a number of reasons, there's this deposit that the sender puts down when they create a flow. And that deposit is used uh, for some, some slashing rewards that's not really relevant, but there's a deposit. So earlier you saw like, okay, his bounce was only 98 point something. But the recipient total has only received, oops, the recipient total has only received, um, you know, less than a tenth of a die. Uh, and then when we deleted that flow, that number went back up again. And so what was happening there was uh, he was getting his deposit back. So that's pretty much it for constant flow agreements. It's happening per second. Um, the trick here, and this is, I know this is just like a spider mess of, of wires now, uh, but to sum it up, we called get ERC20, sorry, first we minted, first we minted our die on uh, our F die, which is just a fake die contract. Then we got the ERC20 wrapper contract, which is deterministic based on the address for the contract and the token. And remember it's the token X with the suffix. So F die X, uh, that's the argument that you pass to get ERC20 wrapper. Um, then we approved and upgraded our, uh, our, our F die. The approve was coming from the F die contract, right? Because we're approving the die. And then upgrade is on our new die X contract, which is a super token contract at that get ERC20 wrapper address. Um, and then we are also calling the balance of on die X as well. We created a flow and the output of arguments from that, the encoded ABI from that flow uh, is the uh, is used um, as the second argument for call agreement on the host contract and then uh, the host contract is where we actually call uh, the the method for starting and ending uh, flows creating de delete flows and uh, the first argument on call agreement is the address for the constant flow agreement which in this case is what we're using in the next video i'll talk about instant distributions as well so hope that was helpful and uh, see you in the next video.